course, the Satan is going to tell you that you can't do it. It's too much for you. Too much for you. Now, the Gemara in Masechet Avodah Zarah, page 20b, talks about a track that a person can follow in order to elevate themselves to the point of becoming a Baal Ruach HaKodesh, someone that has Ruach HaKodesh. And the Mesilat Isharim, also known as the Path of the Just, the Ramchal, he uh, uses the same path with a few, uh, a few different things where the order of, of the uh, steps are slightly different in a few places. But the path in itself is the same. But what's, why, what's, what's the main thing? The main thing that they have in common, whether it's the Gemara or it's the Ramchal, if you want to get to Ruach HaKodesh, like Eliyahu Navi says in Tana Devei Eliyahu, whether it's a man or a woman, a servant or a mistress, a, uh, a uh, old or young, Jew or non-Jew, everyone is able to get to a point of having Ruach HaKodesh based on their actions. So how, what kind of actions do you need to do? The Gemara says what it is, the Messiah of Yishrim says what it says. This is the steps you need to do. So now we're not going to worry about all two dozen steps let's worry about step number one what's step number one is it common is it the same thing step number one is the same thing what is it learn to learn learn to learn learn to learn follow it learn to learn follow it Rabbi Tayyip Karim Rabbi Mordechai Zuckerman one of the Talmidim of the Chafetz Chaim he was a Talmid of the Chafetz Chaim but when they asked him who's your Rav he says that his Rebbe is Rav Bunim Rav Bunim an Admo Chassid now he wasn't a Hasid, but he says his Rebbe is, is Rabunim. Rakam is a Rabunim. He says Rabunim, he had a store, and in his store he had some different types of goods, and you had to have a license for every different type of goods. A strange government that was trying to torture people with all types of strange regulations. So he had some goods that, according to the uh, law of the land, was not allowed. But people needed them. And there was no other way to get them to be allowed. So he sold them anyway. But as you would have it, one of the government employees came into town and was looking to catch somebody hot-handed, selling things they're not allowed to sell. As soon as Rav Bunim saw this, saw that this person is coming down the, uh, down the road, he got out of the store and went to the Bet Midrash to go learn Torah. So when they asked him, for the Rav, the, you left the store unattended, and this government employee didn't even pass by your store. Didn't touch it. How did you know that you going to learn Torah is going to help? How did you know that you going to learn Torah as a sgula to be protected against this danger that you had? To catch you selling something you're not allowed, at the best case scenario, you're getting fined all of your possessions. At the worst case scenario, they may kill you. How did you know they're going to learn Torah under such conditions? Because either way, if they go into your store, even if you're not there, they arrest you, they, they do whatever they want. So how did you know they're going to learn Torah? That's the solution. So Rav Zuckerman says, Rav Bunim re- responded. It's very simple. It says, in Torah. David Melech says, in Psalm 119, verse number 95, you have to go learn Torah. You have to go learn Torah in order to escape any trouble. So Rav Zuckerman says, that's when he became my Rebbe. When I heard the story, that's when he became my Rebbe. Why? Because not only did he use the Torah as something to escape to under all conditions, no matter what, that's where we go, that's where we, that's where we pray, that's where we learn, that's what we do every, every day, all day. But not only did he learn Torah on a regular basis, not only did he use Torah, he escaped to it, but he was glued enough to the Torah that he had a pasuk, he had a verse to back his decisions. He wasn't just running to the Bet Midrash because he has nowhere else to go or and he just likes Torah. He actually learned the Torah so much so that he knew this is what the Torah says. You have trouble, go learn Torah. You have a headache, go learn Torah. You are looking for a wife, go learn Torah. You're looking for... For a job, go learn Torah. You're having uh, money issues, go learn to everything, go learn Torah. 
Now, in this particular case, Rav Bunim not only learned Torah, but he had a verse for every single problem you could have in life. He knew what it says in the Torah about this. And what is it? Go learn Torah. But he had different verses for different things. That's when he became my Rebbe. When someone is so glued to the Torah and knows that the teachings are not only divine, but they are applicable to our life, no matter who, what, when, and how your life is, that's where I, want to, I made my rabbi. Now, is not, has shalom, not to say that the Chafetz Chaim was any less, but nonetheless, Rav Zuckerman said, I connected to him at that point. Now, the key here we learn is that when you use the Torah, you're always going to succeed. But sometimes people think they're using the Torah because they heard something or they learned something, but they don't necessarily know how to apply it and what ends up happening is many times they decide for themselves that this is the way you apply it and they end up causing more damage than good. One of the examples is brought in a sefer that I have mentioned several times over the years called Or Israel. Or Israel was uh, written by uh, one of the Talmidim of uh, Rabbi Israel Misalant, uh, a Talmid, a Gaon, a Gadol Ador by the name of Rabbi Yitzchak Blazer. And he writes in there, some of his own commentaries that he learned from his Rebbe, from Rabbi Israel Misalant, and also many of the letters from Rabbi Israel Salant himself. And in there he says there's a story. One time, during the heavy day of Yom Kippur, during a day of judgment, during a day of all of us pleading with Hashem, he said he saw one of the Keilah members that uh, had the fear of Hashem from the day on his face. So much so that when he passed by Rabbi Yisrael Misalat, the Dola Dol, he didn't even notice him. He didn't say hi, nothing. His face was like full of fear and he didn't even recognize who's next to him. He didn't even say hello, nothing. So Rabbi Yisrael Misalat, the Baal Musar. You say, well, Yirat Shemaim is a good thing. No, it's not, it's not Tzadik. Listen to what Rabbi Yisrael Misalan says. Rabbi Yisrael Misalan says to Rabbi Yitzchak Blazer, he says to him, why do I have to suffer because he is scared of God? Why do I have to suffer because he's scared of God? Why is it my fault that he's scared of God? First, you think to yourself, wait a minute, how, how are you suffering? How are you suffering? Why, you really need people to say hello? What Rabbi Yisraeli Salant was trying to teach his Talmud is that although the Torah said you have to have fear of heaven, it also says that when you see someone, have a nice face, smile, say hello. Your fear of heaven does not need to be on the exterior. Your fear of heaven needs to be on the interior. So when you pass by somebody, especially someone from your keilah, your community, needless to say, you pass by your own rabbi or the rabbi of the community and you don't even acknowledge that they're even there, that means that what you're doing, although on the exterior it looks like a good thing, you have fear of heaven, chazaku baruch, no chazaku baruch. Why? You're doing it from your own mind rather from the way that the sages said. Your fear of heaven needs to be expressed in a different way. Why? Because the same Torah that said that have fear of heaven also says that you have to have a nice face when you see people. Can't walk around like it's like you just went through war every day. And the reality is, Rabotai, is that what he was doing was not because of the Torah. It was rather because it was something that agreed with his own mentality. And when it's something that just agrees with your own mentality, it's not going to succeed. Over the long run, it won't succeed. When it comes from the Torah, it will succeed. That's where the guarantee comes in. 